Hello everybody. So we're back again here today and off the top here I just wanted to throw in this cut that I did of the Nova Scotia outline. This was a commission piece. Uh, it came out really nice so I just wanted to uh, show the cutout and the finished product on this one. Then we'll get into the meat of the video. I'm going to be cutting out some more of those hummingbird feeder hangers and uh, I'm going to do a little bit more to explain some of my process and my setup and how I'm going about doing things. So. You can just sit back, enjoy this cut for the first minute or two of this video, and then we'll get into the main portion. I do my water table clean out and uh, I used one of these uh, welding magnets here for the cleanup uh, and pulled all the bigger pieces out and then this is all the stuff I scraped off the bottom all this flaky stuff so a couple more pieces in there but pulled all this flaky stuff out and uh, scrape it up off the bottom with a potty knife and in the garbage it'll go so looks like the water table is doing its job and holding up quite well Hey everybody and welcome back, uh, especially after this little hiatus that we've had. Uh, things have been really, really busy for me, so I haven't had a chance to make or edit any videos. Uh, I've still got a bunch of other stuff filmed that I, I still want to release, but um, I'm down here tonight working on a little project um, and I've got a couple uh, more hummingbird feeder hangers that I'm going to cut out here. I'm doing it on 14 gauge uh, and I wanted a little bit more resolution to my cuts um, and not so much sort of overlap or you know, getting some of the burnouts. So I went from a one millimeter nozzle. Uh, I've got a 0.9 millimeter nozzle in there. I'm going to be cutting on 14 gauge. Uh, I've never cut this material with this nozzle before, so I'm just going to dial in some settings uh, before I cut the actual pieces. And uh, so I'm going to walk you through that. So as per my other video, uh, I've drawn a rectangle here. It's uh, 30 millimeters long, um, about 12 millimeters high. Put a corner radius in. Uh, let's just take a look at that here. So, I got that selected. Uh, 
Let's try that. <laughs> yeah, corner radius is six. Yeah, height is 12. Um, I'm not going to bother saving it. I set my tune up. I'm going to start. So I'm, I'm going to be cutting at 35 amps, um, 70 PSI on the Everlast. Uh, I'm going to start out at 1800. Everything else are my stock settings. Um, Pierce, I tend to run that a little bit higher if I can, just to keep my nozzles from getting fouled up. Uh, I find anything over three and a half, you know, even up to eighth inch works really well. Probably on the piece when I go to cut it, that'll be dropped down to about three millimeters, um, just because my lead-ins are very, very short so that I can cut some of the finer features. But anyway, we're going to give this a shot right here and we're going to see how the edge quality comes out and whether I need to go up or down on my speed. So here we go. Okay, so that actually looked really, really good. Um, there might be a minimal amount of bevel, but not enough that I'm concerned, not for art pieces or anything like that, uh, and almost no dross on it. So I bumped it up to 2,000 millimeters a minute just to sort of see where, where we'll land, uh, and we'll see how that does. Um, having this much water in the water table, you can see how much splash there is, so you got to sort of watch it a little bit doing this. You don't want to soak the arc droid out. Okay, so 2000 is a little bit quick, so I'm going to stick with around 1800. I might be able to go down to 1700, it might give me a little nicer cut, but there's almost no dross and it looks pretty good. There's a little bit of bevel on the, the corners, but I think it's an acceptable amount. So um, I think 1800 is going to be it for the 0.9 nozzle at 35 amps. Okay, just a couple of notes. So I'm gonna use my settings. Um, we're gonna run 1800 millimeters a minute. Um, clearance I'm probably gonna put down to 12 because there's not a lot of drops that I'm gonna have that are big, so that should be okay. You can see everything else I've got there. Exactly the same as my test cut. So the way that I've set this up, um, I've got a left version of this and then I've got a right version which is flipped 180 degrees because it just works out that on my machine material here I can get two of these uh, in that space up there. So basically with this 24 by 48 uh, sheet of 14 gauge I can cut two there then I can set the machine up slice a straight slice across to re-square an edge uh, and then continue on down and get a bunch of these out of a single sheet. So that's how I go about maximizing my use of material. Uh, I'll actually lay it out in Fusion 360 once I have something modeled up. I'll just duplicate the model and size it out and see how many I can get on, in, in on a sheet. And then I'll make the piece a little bit smaller or a little bit larger depending on what um, is going to most economically use up my material. Um, if I'm going to do something like this that I'm going to make a bunch of and sell for a really reasonable price, um, I'd rather sort of set it up so that I can get the most out of my sheet. I know exactly what my costs are, and that way at the end uh, I can assess whether it's worth it to, to do this or not. So anyway, um, so when you're setting these up, you just use the same origin point. So all I have to do when I'm ready to cut the next one, I split these up into two files just because it's easier to deal with, especially on the Arcdroid. So after I cut this one out, I can just load the left hand file. My zero point stays the same and I can cut that one right after this one's done. So um, I think that's it. I've got torch height control enabled. We'll see how that works out. And yeah, let's get on to the cut.
Okay, so with that one done, I just go in here to load, we'd clear, hummingbird hanger, and we'd do the left. We can see that'll lay that out right there. All right, that's going to be it for today, folks. Uh, I've got a little bit more from this cut session uh, and some expl explanation of my laser alignment setup you saw me use very briefly there. I'm going to do that in another video because this one's already long enough. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you all next time.